Okay, so we have these women. These women who have followed Jesus. These women who sat at his feet, listened to his teachings, were able to ask him questions. These women knew Jesus intimately, right? And here they are, going to the tomb, which is customary. They're bringing the different ointments and things to anoint his body for burial. As they enter the tomb, they're encountered by messengers from God. Messengers that ask them, why are you looking for, um, why are you looking among the dead for someone who is alive? I mean, it makes sense, though, that they're going to the tomb. What the women had known, their whole experience, was that anyone who was brutally beaten, tortured, and nailed to a Roman cross you usually always actually end up dead. That's their experience. That is what is familiar to them. But these are women that knew Jesus well. These are women that we know heard Jesus say that I must suffer, I must die, but I will rise again in three days. So it got me thinking. And I felt God's spirit just saying to me, We are the women. We are the women. We know what they know. Actually, we know the whole story of Jesus. We know who we are. We know we've been made in God's image. We know that we have been wonderfully made. We are here for a purpose and a reason. We know that we have a God who loves us so much that he has chosen us to rest in, that the very spirit of God is within all of us, that you have been given talents for here and now to be used for God's glory. We know all this. We know that death is not the end. That every time someone beats you down, every time something happens to you, every time you endure pain, that God has given us a spirit that will raise you up to new life. We know that death is not even the end. We know that our body may lie in the dust, and to dust we will return, but our spirit goes and is with God because nothing will separate us from the love of God. We know this, but then why is it that we live our lives So many of us, as though we don't. Like the women, we find ourselves wandering to what is familiar, to the tomb. We go searching in places and spaces among the dead. Things that don't bring life, rather than taking the gift of resurrected life that has been given to all of us. And I realize that we do this. Because like the women, we forget. We forget who we are. We forget that we are empowered people. We forget how loved we are. We forget the story of what God is doing in and through us. We forget. And we forget so easily. Because the more I thought about it, the more I thought about our culture, How do you not forget? We are so inundated with things being thrown at us. We are in an age of information. People aren't even getting married until way later in life. You want to know why? There's way too many fish in the sea. (laughs) When the world becomes your sea, the options are overwhelming. And here's the truth. If we forget who we are, If we forget how amazing and divinely we've been made, intentionally made, the world is going to tell you who you are. Actually, in our culture, the world will sell you who you are. You are beautiful. And if you have this surgery or put this cream on your face for this amount of money, you too can be beautiful. Hide all the wrinkles that come as though wrinkles aren't a mark of life and experience and story. You want to be powerful? Purchase this car. You will be powerful if you drive this. You want to be a good parent? Enroll your kids in 15,000 sports that they're horrible at. (laughs) 
spend lots of money on unnecessary equipment that will be shoved in your garage somewhere, right? But you'll be a good parent. Distracting us, driving around from here to there where we aren't even spending genuine time with one another. You're to be powerful and beautiful, confident. Do you want to get rid of all your insecurities and live into who you've been created to be and be confident and strong and bold? Well, for $399, Anthony Robbins will help you do that. <laughs> this is who you are. This is who we are. And for the right price, we can all have it. We have to be careful, brothers and sisters, because we live in a world that will not only tell us, but sell us who we are and will get us going down the wrong path really quick. Because once you know you're driving that car, you have that house, you have that marriage you wanted, you have the kids, they're in 50 million sports, you're driving everywhere, you still feel this sense of emptiness. Something isn't right. There's an angst inside of us. And it's because we're not living into who we are. We're not remembering what's important. We're not remembering that we are children of God's resurrection to be living in a certain way that God has called us. We need to remember what God told us. Yes, we have a world that will sell us and tell us who we are to be and what is important and try to fit people who are shaped like a square into a circle and try to put fish in the sky and birds in bowls. But it's like that because we live in a world where we fight against principalities and spirits that are beyond us where we are told that our adversary, the devil, prowls like a roaring lion, seeking to get you to get off the path in which God had made you for. You know, I love C.S. Lewis. One of his books, Screwtape Letters, there is a demon who is in the underworld, Screwtape, and he is a secretary there. And he's writing to his nephew, his incompetent nephew, who's young and his job is to sway this other young man on earth away from who he is, away from who God created him to be, and down the wrong path, right? And so Screwtape is writing his nephew Wormwood these letters, and at one point in the book, it becomes so easy for Wormwood to get this young man off track because he's so busy, things are just being thrown at him. All these things that say, this is what you need to do and this is who you need to be, it's just being thrown at him. And so it's so easy for him to forget who he is, what's important, and what he's been made for, and to get him going down the wrong track. It's the same for us. You know, Satan is the father of lies and loves to take things that have been said about you, done to you, loves to take those little things that is truth because they happened and twist a lie around them to paralyze you just enough so you don't live confidently into what it means to be a resurrected child of, the God, of God, filled with God's spirit. In Jesus' first temptation when he was in the wilderness, the first thing Satan did was tempt him by challenging who he was, challenging his identity. If you are the son of God, if, if you are the son of God, turn this stone into bread. If, if you're really a child of God, if you're really that important, if you're worth protecting, if you're worth leaving and not forsaking, if you're worth saving, this is the message that can so easily be fed to us. And then it keeps us in the grave, and it keeps us locked in, and it keeps us from living into who God created us to be. And God is saying, enough. God is saying, I want you to remember who you are. Remember how I told you that you are a beloved child, that you are not only good, you are very good, 
and that I gave you talents to be used for here and now, for a purpose. And if you don't live into your purpose, we are the body. So if you do not step into who God created you to be and you do not live into the purpose that God had for your life, you're affecting me. And I'm affecting you. And we're affecting God's plan of reigning God's kingdom of love and forgiveness and service and gentleness and kindness into the world. When we forget that we are the very temple that God has chosen, God has chosen to live within us. God has chosen to work through us. We are a new creation. We can't die. Whatever trauma you have been through, whatever you have endured, whoever has abandoned you and left you, whatever has gone on in your life, you are a child of the resurrection. God will move in and through you, bring people around you to raise you up to new life so that you will be stronger than you were before. And if there is one thing we learned, it's that we have a savior that not only is death not the end, but when he rose from that grave, he had scars. So do you want to know what that means? Your scars serve a purpose and they are beautiful and they are to be used now. Your scars then bring healing to others because God works all things out for the good of those who love him. This is the truth that we need to remember. And death is not even the end when our bodies die. We then go with God. Nothing separates us from the love of God. We can't forget that we have been called to be the light of the world and that even if we do not feel of worth, even when we do not feel like we are enough, that we have a God, even if you feel like no one cares about you, no one loves you, nobody understands because you are alone, you have a God, we have a God that will pursue you all the days of your life until your last breath, trying to give you nothing but goodness and love. You are so of worth, you are worth dying for. Are you living into that? Are we living into that? Because this is the people that we are called to be. And this is why God saved us, so that we can live into this. Let us not have God, have endured, Jesus have endured what he did on the cross for nothing. If we don't take our gift and live into our power, how heartbreaking that must be for Jesus who took it all onto himself so that we can live in this freedom that we all so desperately desire. And it wasn't until in the tomb when the woman remembered. It isn't until we remember that we can do what these women did. They lifted their head up from the dirt, they rose up, and then they ran out, becoming the first apostles, proclaiming how what God is doing in the world, how God is moving and breathing, brings resurrected life, not just to Jesus then, but to us now, and this is our gift. This is our gift. We, too, should be running out into the world, not staying in the familiarity of the tomb. It's the devil I know. It's what I've been told. It's, it's who others have said I am. We need to step out in faith and know that our God is bigger than all things. And all the strength we need, everything we need, comes from a God that just waits to pour abundantly upon us Anything and everything you need if you're willing to run out of the tomb of the familiar and say, I'm going to do it, God. Here I am. I don't know how. I don't have the money. I don't have the talents. But you know what, God? Here I am. Use me. And God is going to pour in on your life because that is one of the promises. There are over 7,000 promises that God makes to us in Holy Scripture. And if you don't read it, you don't know them, and you can't claim them. Right? Yeah. I could buy a treadmill. If I don't get on it, I'm not going to lose any weight. <laughs> we got to use it. We got to believe it. We got to live into it. This is who we are called to be. And when you do this, though, when you do this, when you do this, those who are often closest to you, like the disciples were to the woman, 
think it's nonsense. Might think you're a little bit crazy. Who are you? Who are you to be moving your family half across because God told you to? Who are you to be going and serving in these other countries and risking your life? Who, why are you doing this? Who are you? Why are you even helping those people and, and giving your money to help those people you don't even know? Who are you to be doing this? Who are you to quit your job because you feel God calling you to something else? You know, King David, in Psalm 27, the world wanted to tell him who he was. God told him he was to be a king. But the world said, you're nothing but a shepherd boy. That's who you are. And the world hunted him down. The world talked about him, tried to kill him. And you know what King David said in Psalm 27? In this, I will have confidence. This, I will have confidence. In who you say I am, God. If you say I'm to be a king, then I'm to be a king. If you say you never leave me and forsake me, you will protect me and guard me under your mighty right hand, then this is what I will have confidence in. That is what God wants for you. Not for the abuse you endured, not for the abandonment you experienced, not for the things that have been said to you, not for the ways you didn't succeed. You need to step into this out of the tomb, and say, it is in this I will have confidence. I don't need to know how. I don't need to know when. I just know it'll happen. Because this is who I am. This is why God died. And this is why we've been given the gift of resurrected life. Because healing and freedom is ours. So that we can live into God's love, give ourselves away, and bring about God's kingdom in ways that are going to bring wholeness and healing and the unimaginable into not only our lives, but the lives of all those around us. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for your son. We thank you that you loved us enough to come and be with us, to walk among us, to show us how to live boldly and fearlessly that you then gave your life for us to show us that we are so of worth, we are so precious to you, that you will pursue us until our last breath trying to get us to see who we are. I ask, Heavenly Father, that you take the scales from everyone's eyes here, all those joining online, all those who hear this message, that you let the scales fall from their eyes, that they can begin to see themselves, how beloved they are, how of worth they are, how valued they are, and how you want to use them for your glory and miraculous ways. May they live into this courageously and fearlessly, because it is you who is moving and breathing in us. Amen.